Hello. <laughs> Hi, Lynn. Hi, Sherry. <laughs> I like I can see most of you. <laughs> oh wait, this it always. Uh, there you go. Yeah. So how's, how's it? it going? Oh, getting hot out there, and I think I have a skunk hiding. Oh yuck. Yeah, I think it's under the concrete somewhere. Oh. I'm about ready to call Lewis and say, hey, I got to put my air on because uh, skunk's coming through the window. Oh, my God. I know. I'll give it a couple more days, but I've been smelling it for a few already. And I looked it up. They like to go underneath concrete, and they'll stay oh, there. Oh, do they? Yeah. Find some, like found something even more gross in my garbage can. I won't go there right now. What? <laughs> oh, my God. I'm dealing with it right now. Uh, I know. Something, uh, a critter? No. Well, yeah, many. Oh, mice? No. Oh. Something that appears there and you have no idea how they get there. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. I'm drowning like them right now. Bees? No. Okay, you can text me later. <laughs> I'll text you right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me grab my phone. <laughs> Let's see. I got to think of which column. Um, <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm not there yet. Oh, is, wait. I don't know who you oh, are. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> From the heat, it's so bad. My uh, neighbor. They're going yeah. to turn into. They're going to end up turning into flies. No, they came from fly eggs, didn't they? Yeah, but like if if you have those sitting there, are they all white? Yeah, they're they're drowning now. Yeah, <laughs> but they if you let them hatch, they turn into flies. Gross. This? A ton of big flies. Yes. Oh. So uh -huh. it's, good. it's good you're drowning them. Yeah, I suppose there was meat. Well, I went to throw something away, and I think my, uh, my neighbor, she shares my garbage can. No sense in both of us putting those big honkers out there, you know? Yeah. Um, we both maybe have two throwaways a week if we're lucky. It could have put, also. You put a bunch of baking soda in there, and I kept smelling something like there was something dead in my garage. And I asked Brian, I'm like, I mean, I got a nose like crazy, you know? Yep. And uh, he's like, no, I don't smell anything. Well, here it was, that darn garbage. And I thought, well, that baking soda isn't even going to touch it. And I looked inside there and I almost puked. <laughs> Oops, Another, sorry. It, no, <laughs> it could have been like a dead mouse that deteriorated and... I don't know how it would have... Well, or just meat bones. Yep. That's all you need. Yeah, we had steak recently, so. Oh, my God. They're oh, so gross. Brian had something. I don't think he even had a bone to his, but meat fat. Who knows? All right, I better stop talking that wonderful <laughs> stuff. <laughs> okay. I'll okay. be right back. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello. Nine participants. So today we have Andrea, Sherry, Kyle, Lynn, Melissa. Oh, they're jumping around. There's one phone number. I'm going to assume that that is. Oh, Sativa. That took me a second. Sorry. <laughs> Cheryl. <laughs> Cheryl and Carrie. Oh, and Chris joined us. All 
All right. Okay, so Lynn's ready so we can start, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had to throw my laundry in the dryer quick. <laughs> Julie? Yes. Uh, this is Sarah Nelson. I just jumped on. I'm going to run to the school and pick Alana up from volleyball and be right back in five minutes. So I'm just going to keep my computer on. So I may miss oh, the first. Okay. So just, in, yeah, it's taking. Just don't ask me a question because I won't know. <laughs> <laughs> We'll let you know if there's any ghosts in the house or anything. All right. All right, I am going to share my screen. <clears throat> share. I'm going to find my agenda. And today's agenda is a little short. Oh, I don't have, I only have two things on it. It's okay. There we go. Now I have it connected to today. And we do still have, oh, it's exactly three o'clock, so we can start. Um, so yesterday, no wait, I'm sorry, Monday, yesterday was Tuesday. Um, we had a discussion at the board level about um, offering an option um, to create probably um, Wednesdays as a virtual non face to face day for all students. Um, maybe just for the high school, maybe for the whole K 12. We're not certain, but we're going to include it in a survey of sorts. Is there any discussion about that? Well, I think it would be um, really difficult to pack up what you've been doing on Monday and Tuesday and then go virtual on Wednesday and then come back on Thursday and Friday. Um, specifically to my area, I, um, that doesn't seem to be real I hate to say it like this but a good use of time I it would take me hours to prepare for a virtual class in the middle of the week for 40 students okay but do you see all 40 of your students in one day half okay 20. so you'd only have to do the virtual for the half and actually what I would do is I would make sure that I had some prep time on Wednesday personally um, to plan for that. What about the kids that are virtual all the time? Are you have to gonna, you're gonna have to pre-plan for those. Yeah, but that's so much easier um, because I just plan virtual and they have, I give them about three weeks of work ahead of time. So my work and, each individual kid's work matches up. So it's hard to say at one point where those kids are going to be on a Tuesday and then virtual on Wednesday and then getting, you know, the information to them and be ready to go on Wednesday. That, that would be difficult. Okay. I would just like to say one of the reasons that we talked about this was we've kind of looked at what the teacher's schedules are also going to be. And actually one of the things that was somewhat talked about was that maybe the Wednesday um, from like 8 till lunchtime, the classes might actually even be shorter, but that it would be, you know, probably the core like math, English, science, um, and then that the teachers would actually be at school and then that would give them some time with prep and everything else. Um, and my question would be if you're seeing this student on Monday or Tuesday, why could something not be given to them that this is what I want you to do on Wednesday? Um, I could do that. It, it just, 
would be, well, then they have to get the paper home and then the parents would have to organize it, which sometimes is a problem. Um, and I just see, I foresee some trouble. I give my students like this summer, you know, about three weeks ahead of time. And sometimes I go back into school and I have to deliver um, the necessary materials to their house because I know the mail isn't going to get it to them by the time their next session is. So I do a lot of driving around and I just, you know, delivering this stuff to the kids. I, I just don't know. It's a work in progress. I mean, I'll try it, see how it goes. I'm just saying, you know, I would, I would just prefer to do um, five days face to face, all virtual or face to face um, with my students, or you know, have a prep for half a day. That would be great. Um, I just don't know. I mean, I, I'll try anything, but the way things are going now, I mean, it works really smooth. Um, it, like I said, I do a lot of running around, but in the end, I have a really good success rate. Uh, my students show up, uh, most of them, I'd say it's like 95%. Um, and the parents are involved and they sit right there, but it, it takes a lot of prep. It's just, I don't know if they take the paper home, it doesn't get home. I call them up for, you know, the virtual and the mom hasn't seen the paper. Well, there goes my, my time. You know, there's just a lot can of things. So I'll can you, try. Yeah, can you think of, of a way that you could share the paperwork ahead of time virtually? So we're gonna learn how to use Schoology. And if you download it, you could create a class for each kid and you could put that paper, you know, you could literally pull the paper up in your, in your online class and the kid can see it on the screen instead of seeing you. Right. That would be a way to do it virtually. Then you don't have to worry about, you know, if the parents right there and you can, they can point to whatever and the parents can say, yeah, they're pointing to the right picture or whatever. Yeah. Um, the, the only thing about that, and you know, I'm, you know, thinking all that over, but when I give the kids, especially the elementary from grade five on down, if I give them an activity to do and I have a copy of it, they, they're much more involved if they're doing something on the paper with me rather than just looking at a screen of a paper, you know, if they have to circle, we do concepts, you know, above, below, next to, you know, we learn a lot of other things doing it that way. And it keeps their interest if they get to do something with a paper that's in front of them. Yeah, that makes sense. But I think you yeah. could potentially tweak. Right. Then yeah. that parents can keep the paper. Oh, yeah. I, what I do is I just um, as we go along saying the sounds, I write their progress down. And um, so the parents can use that paper for practice with their child another time. And I have all the data because I collect it as I go. The other thing that we were thinking because of having the masks mandatory, that this by breaking up the week, that that would that would maybe alleviate, especially at first. This this doesn't mean that this would continue. What did we say? Nine weeks. Yeah. And then and then reevaluate. The yeah. other the other concern that the board had was that if we start with the five days, and we realize the pressure that will be on the staff because we are going to have um, uh, there's been indication that we probably will have more virtual students now um, that that if it just became too much and then we had to back it up and and then institute maybe taking a day off that it would be harder 
then for the parents to maybe make arrangements on short notice versus coming up with that now so that they would know this is this is what the schedule is going to be oh i completely agree with that the longer you give them in advance the easier the transition i totally agree with that then they can you know get their daycare or whatever stay home work from home like a lot of the parents are doing yeah i totally agree Um, I had a question regarding the virtual on Wednesdays, and I tried to ask this in the board meeting, and it, it wasn't completely clear the answer, but on those virtual days, all right, now, because virtual can mean so many different things, so I'm trying to understand whether those virtual days mean we basically are going to be having a Zoom meeting with these kids and teaching them where they're at home and we're in the school, or is it they can, we have an assignment up on Schoology and they can do it at their leisure? So the plan is from now on, virtual means that you are online actively learning. It will. But when? It, well, and Linda referenced it. So maybe on Wednesdays, um, we're only going to have for the elementary, the kids only should be online from eight to noon. And then in the afternoon, they can work on other physical activities or they can work on their science or social studies or, or some a little bit more remediation versus the learning but we can't schedule um a day off from learning you can't teach monday yes. and tuesday and remediate on wednesday so there's going to be new learning on these wednesdays if that's the day we end up picking yep and i understand that but i'm just trying to again understand is this virtual learning like we're doing right now, having a discussion, like we're basically in the classroom, but we're just all on our computers? Or is it something that they're gonna log onto the computer and the whole lesson will just be there on Schoology and they do it? No, we're want, we want the kids to be actively engaged so they can be on Zoom, or you could do a Moodle or a discussion board, not a Moodle, a discussion board, or what is it, Blackboard? I can't remember which, what the name of the discussion boards are. Schoology has some things built in. Yeah. The other thing you can do is um, you can shorten your lessons so that they get only like 10 minutes of instruction that day, knowing that they're going to check in with you, make sure they are asking questions. You can go over an assignment that you assigned the day before or assign more of the assignment that you gave the day before. Um, and then they, you know, you're, you're the, the idea is that the kids are actively engaged on Wednesdays as best we can. Okay, and then for the virtual with the kids, so say I have two kids in my foods class that are gonna do virtual this year. So is that the same for them as well? So like during my second period where I'm teaching foods that they need to be somehow engaged with us at that point? Yes. Or is it something where I have to set up something completely different for them to do? No, it, nothing has to be completely different. The idea, the idea is that when you are talking about planning your lesson, and this is a shift, so we have to understand, we have to learn how to do some of this. So when you're planning your foods lesson and yours lends itself to labs, so it's kind of nice. So for example, if you're going to, I'm gonna pick uh, something that I think you did international food wise, you had them research the country and typical foods in the country and they and you can give them um you know the links where you want them to go or you want to have them watch a video or you want them to read this article from this newspaper and that's all loaded into schoology already and so then you give them some time to do research and then they have to fulfill you know three different menu options and do the research on where all the ingredients came from that's all built in to the lesson and then say you cook one day so they're going to have to cook at home or do the best they can with preparing or alternately do something. I don't know how you can have kids cook at their own house. We wouldn't be able to have, they wouldn't have all the ingredients. That one's a, that'll be a conundrum for me to think about um, about nine weeks from now. Um, but it's the idea that the kids are actively engaged and you're already building that into your lesson. You're, you're not just gonna hand a worksheet out on Monday and say, okay, everybody, get on your Chromebooks and do this. You're gonna have that downloaded, ready to go, and 
they can do the research online, they can maybe um, watch a video on that, that country or that's all going to be embedded in your lessons so that they can understand, okay, I'm going to pick China and, you know, what does Chinese food look like? Well, it doesn't look like the restaurant in the town. Chinese food looks way different. And then you're going to have them compare and contrast two different, you know, the Chinese food and restaurant menu in Richland Center and China. And you can actually literally go to Chinese restaurants and do that. Um, but the online and the virtual are embedded right in all your lesson planning. It's right. new. It's yep. different. Yep. No, it just makes sense. I was just really trying to figure out how, if I literally would have to do two different lesson plans, one for the kids that are doing virtual versus the ones that are in my classroom face to face. And that's, you know, that's very typical, Melissa, that, that that's how we would look at it. Uh, because we have not truly been taught how to do universal design for learning. So as a special education teacher, I, I, I've known about UDL for, for 20 years. Um, and what you're doing is you're designing with the end product in mind, how am I, before you even plan the lesson, you're gonna reflect on, okay, can a special ed kid that reads at the third grade level still comprehend what I'm writing? Can a child that doesn't speak English as their primary language, can they access this lesson? So maybe you're gonna send something to, to Hannah to have her write it in, in a different language to make sure that they're understanding the instructions. Um, how can I show this in a different way so that it's for visual learners? So I found a video clip. How can I have, so I can, I can put this article in here and I can have it be read to them on their computer out loud if they're poor readers. So if you go, do some of that universal design for learning right up front, you're automatically planning for virtual and in class. But that's not something we've worked on yet. We are working toward that. And some of that is gonna be how to embed that stuff into Schoology and we'll learn a lot more about that when we get the Schoology training. Did that answer your question? Yes, thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, because sometimes I talk too much and I get away from my question, <laughs> the answer. All right, any other questions about the, I, I, you know, talking about the every day, that's, that's the only thing I really have on the agenda other than making sure we don't have to have these meetings every week if you guys don't feel we need to meet. So I um, always got to check in. It's one of those things, if you don't have an agenda, you don't have a meeting. I had a question about masks. Okay. Um, so since we're doing mandatory masks, what is our plan? Because I'm thinking middle school. Um, what is our plan to enforce that? I mean, if we've got middle schoolers that are constantly playing with them or taking them off or like, um, you know, just, just putting up a, making, making a big deal about it. What is our, do we have a plan um, of how we, um, whether it's just discipline or whatever, um, just how we, I guess, plan to enforce that? or go about that if we have kids that are pushing back? Yes, um, I know Chris and Kathleen have been talking about having, um, you know, like a step process for that. Um, part of that is gonna be our education. We need to teach the kids and educate them about how important the masks are and why we're wearing them and the proper way to use them and take them on and off. Um, I know it's Dan right now, it's a good thing I'm not on camera, it keeps falling down my face. Um, so part of that is us teaching the kids why we're masking, um, why it's important. That's what kind of the SEL group is going to pick up a little bit of that for us. Yeah, you're so about that, half you know, and, oh, Chris, did you have a question? Nope. Okay, sorry. Um, so they're kind of picking that up as, as a, okay, we're going to give them two warnings in middle school, you know, one warning in high school kind of a thing. Um, they ha the school board has decided that the students are going to be wearing masks. Um, and it's to safeguard everybody's lives, basically. Um, we don't want to go that deep with the kids, but 
we, we are suggesting that the parents start practicing now with, you know, let's everybody wear their mask for five minutes and, and it's the novelty is going to wear off real quick, but um, they just, they have to. And part of that is our educating of them, be, you know, why we're doing it. You're wearing a mask to keep me safe. Because if you are breathing out the bad germs, I might get them if you don't have your mask on. And sometimes them just hearing that is is helpful too, because I'm not wearing a mask to keep myself safe. I'm wearing a mask to keep you uh, you safe. Thank you. Okay, I'm not hearing a lot of questions on the virtual day options. So does anybody have an opinion on whether or not we should have the four day in the whole, the whole building or just in the high school? That was kind of one of the discussions last uh, Monday night at the board meeting. Is that something maybe we need to put out to the teachers rather than just us few on this call to see kind of what their opinions is or isn't that something that we need to search down? And then is that something that's gonna be asked to the parents as well in that survey? Correct. Parents and teachers are gonna survey, be surveyed. We are going to, um, we worked on the survey today. We had some time between Chris, Kathleen and myself and we're going to continue to do that tomorrow morning and hopefully we'll get that sent out tomorrow afternoon as our goal. To ask both families and peer and teachers what their opinion is. But sometimes when we have these discussions, it sparks good questions to ask. Yeah, I guess the one challenge I see, I guess I see more than one challenge, but one of them is with, especially with the, um, elementary and middle school age kids, not so much the high school, it's just childcare. I mean, I know that there are some kids that, you know, they have that set up, but there are families that just don't have anyone to take care of their kids and they're both working. And I know that sounds like a cop out, but it's just, that's reality. That is what, you know, that is where our society is. Parents are working and they send their kids to school and that's just the way it is. So, um, I mean, there's that concern for that. Like, what do we do with the kids? you know on that and I, I just i'm scared we're going to get back to the issue we had this spring of how do we make those younger kids accountable for doing virtual learning on a on a wednesday and especially if you have a family with several children and the high school oldest child is supposed to be in charge of making sure that they do it i mean i don't know how things went at your house growing up but i was the oldest girl of there's four of us and my younger sister would tell me where to go before she do what you know the homework i told her to do i mean that's just how siblings can kind of be sometimes so I, i'm a little concerned about that um were you able to hear the discussion about maybe having a um an option for parents um to have their kids sit here on wednesdays yeah, I heard a little bit of it. So the the idea is, is basically to just sit in the commons during the day. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, that they would still be actively in the in their cohorts on their computers, and that we would be like quote unquote storing them. We would make sure that they are accounted for, and that would take the onus off of the oldest child. That you know they get to just sit and do their work, and somebody else is helping all the kids. So, and I'm not trying to be the devil advocate here, but I'm just trying to think through all avenues here. Say we have 50% of the elementary kids take advantage of that. And now we have all those kids out in the commons plus their older siblings. So then by that point, the whole cohort thing is blown out of the water because now all of a sudden you have 100 kids sitting out there. Well, if we have that many, then we'll probably cancel the Wednesdays off. Right. Okay. <laughs> There's no okay. sense. I'm, just, I'm just trying to think through this, you know, just yeah. based no. on the surveys of people, you know, there was a lot of parents that said, I want kids to go all day, every day. And if part of their reason is, is they don't want to do with childcare and they're like, well, heck, if the school is going to give me childcare, you're going every day. 
I just could see that very quickly becoming, you know, 50 to 100 kids. Yep. And if it does do that, then we'll have a, a big discussion about it because um, the teachers are still going to be teaching classes that day. So whether or not the kids are sitting, you know, we were hoping and it would be something scheduled versus something that was just, oh, yeah, me and my six siblings just showed up. Because then we'd have to worry about lunch, you name it. Um, but yeah, if, if the parents want their kids here, you know, then I really hope everybody says that in the survey. We did go through and work out, um, Adam has created a new web, a new parents email address. Um, we have a community one. But we, that was more used for um, announcements, and I use it when I send out the agenda notices and stuff. Um, but right now, um, we feel the need to have better communication via email. So he went in um, to Skyward, or somebody went into Skyward, and we found out all the emails that were there, and we were only hitting about 25% of the parents with the emails we had on the community list. So we're hoping to have many, many more um, parents hit with the communication via email because that list is now updated and that'll probably just be a continual updating. You know, please let us know if your email changes, email this email and we'll get it changed in the, in the list. So um, just one of those communication pieces that we have been trying to fix and make better there are some parents out there yet who still do not have an email or don't have a, they don't even have one through a phone right so we are planning on sending out some stuff um we're gathering papers to do a big mass mailing snail mailing um and if nothing else, then they can, you know, call and share what they need to on the phone or, um, you know, there are ways we can get the information that we need from them. Okay. Everyone, this is Terry's mom, Janie. I was at the board meeting the other night and I was kind of told that I could listen into these meetings. I'd like to back up just a little bit about the child care. Um, I know this is going to be a headache for lots and lots of people, and it, not just on Wednesdays, but we're going to run into all sorts of incidences with children being ill. We have no way to know if someone has a cold or if they have COVID. I don't know what you're going to do with little kids with masks on, with snotty noses and colds. Parents are just going to have to realize there's going to be all sorts of days they're going to need child care because their children cannot be in school. Right now, things are kind of blowing up in Richland Center. We have a uh, pretty major increase in cases going on. Uh, we have a family member in quarantine right now. Matter of fact, Julie, I heard through the grapevine you're in quarantine. So I'm kind of questioning why you're at school, if that's true. Um, that I'm means not in quarantine. You're not. Me. Okay. No. All right. Good. No. Now, it's, that means 14 days the kids can't be in school or a teacher can't be in school. So I, I certainly sympathize because I have a grandson and guess who's gonna be taking care of him? I am. Um, but parents are just gonna really have to start making plans right away because there's gonna be a lot of absences and a lot of childcare that's not at school this fall. And I'm also wondering if you've set up a policy and procedure yet for how you're going to handle when people can't be in your school building. What is the incidence? I have been exposed, so I have to stay out so many days. Or I have it. Uh, which of my family who go to school have to stay out for so many days? So that parents and teachers and staff can easily go and read it and know the point that they aren't supposed to be Because they can't be calling you every day and saying, hey, my second cousin has her last Sunday and yada, 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 should I come or shouldn't I come? And I'm just wondering how far you've progressed on doing something about that. That's it for now. All right, so we did, um, on Monday the board did approve, um, let me pull up the board minute. 
the agenda is, let me pull up the minutes. It was approved. Oh, wait, that was not the right one. Um, uh, adding a policy to handbook and um, for all the adults in the building. We have something in place for the adults here. So for those of you who can't need my screen to see it. So um, we're expecting all the employees to stay home um, if they exhibit any symptoms of COVID, including but not limited to fever, Charles cough, shortness of breath. Um, this is not a complete list. Here's the CDC website that has everything listed there. And they must stay home from work if they are diagnosed with COVID. If they are diagnosed, or I'm sorry, they, they are to stay home if someone at home has COVID-19. If you're not experiencing symptoms or haven't been diagnosed, but you do have a family member that you live with, that you must stay home from your work site. You have to stay home if you're directed to do so by a public health agency. Um, and you are required to notify us about those three things. Like I'm staying home because I have these five symptoms. And of course that's an, um, a personal thing, a personnel thing. So we're making, we're not gonna tell everybody that, but we will be keeping track for everybody's safety. Um, then there's family's first Corona emergency leave is one of the new things that came out and um, they finally figured that one out and then they set up two more different kinds of leaves. So um, you can use your sick leave, you can use uh, other leaves that you might have upon request. Um, if employees are required to stay home under the, the you have it or uh, somebody else has it, um, and you may not come into work until cleared by a healthcare provider. And if you share that you have been diagnosed, we will inform public health officials because we're required to by law. And here's where it says we're gonna make sure that we don't um, disclose that. Um, if you become ill after you become, after you come to work and you're like, oh my gosh, I really don't feel good. You're, we're gonna ask you to go home. If you can't go home, we'll help you get home or call an ambulance. Um, when you want to return to work, you must notify us a couple days in advance, and you're going to have to have a doctor's note certifying, or the pub, you know, public health agency will issue a email very easily that said, yes, you you did your 14 days of quarantine, and they have complied with that, so they may return to work. Um, if we have COVID in the building, we're going to have to, as guided by the Richland County Health Department. Uh, we might have to close off though but we might have to close the building we might have to close a wing or a couple classrooms it depends what the county says um, and then in the event that you're unable to provide instruction as a teacher we'll try and get a sub um, if you're unable to teach because you have COVID versus you're unable to teach because you've been quarantined if you're quarantined there's still going to be an expectation that you can teach from home um, but if you can't teach from home for whatever reason, we're going to try and get another teacher and a substitute, or we might have to turn, uh, make another teacher, or even Kathleen, myself, or uh, Chris to fill into the classroom. So that is what we're doing as staff. Um, and I'm sorry, Carrie's mom, I, I know you as Carrie's mom, I don't remember your name. Amy. <laughs> Amy, sorry about that. Um, so we also, I have also shared um, previous to this um, to staff, but I can, I can. Um, so, so, Carrie might have a copy of it that you could see. I don't want to. Well, maybe it might be in my restart committee. I'm not certain. But um, there's a bunch of timelines that we have that. Um, it's visual, it's colored. I didn't print a whole bunch of them, but I, oh, here's one of them. Now, the problem is it's sideways. Um, there's two of them. So um, if I could figure out how to rotate it, will it let me do that? No, so it's not good to share with you guys. Can you see the, the colored things on my 
screen, you guys? I, we can see it. Okay, thanks. Um, but that has, um, so household contacts as asymptomatic cases, and then when you're diagnosed, or the, the data collection was, and then there's your days of isolation, and it's all outlined that way, that we'll probably be referring to. It's from the county, and um, it was already shared with the teacher. I see quite a few teachers with their heads tilted in their windows. I gotta have fun with some of this, you guys, come on. Um, but it's just an idea that um, we do have some guidelines to follow. This came, I don't remember, it came from Rose Kahoot um, from the county. So we do have things that we can use as guidelines for, from the county um, to help us when, it, when it's like, okay, how long? They're pretty good about telling us. So I, um, I, there is a member of staff being quarantined, not staff, uh, a child of a member of our staff being quarantined right now. And um, if that, you know, if that were during school, the school year, we would be asking if, um, if the staff member could come or if that, you know, so there's a difference between it being exposed and being quarantined and um, tangentially exposed, you know, well, my, my, you know, brother-in-law's first cousin has it and I haven't seen him in six years, I wasn't exposed versus, you know, I, I played golf with that person and now, I, you know, we both were outside, but I was with them for longer than 15 minutes and neither of us were wearing masks or maybe I was wearing my mask, but they weren't wearing theirs. You know, the, all those questions are questions the health department's gonna help us with. So while we don't know what it's gonna look like, there has been a lot of thought about it. I do appreciate, I'm gonna take out Carrie's mom and write Amy. <laughs> In my notes, so I remember. And if I spell it wrong, let me know, Amy. Um, Actually, it's Janie, J-E-A-N-N-E. J-E-A-N-N-E. Did I spell that right or is it still wrong? There's an E, J-E-A-N-N-E. E-A-N-N-E, -E. e -N -N -E. got it, thank you. Um, so yeah, there, I like the questions because it does, um, it does bring up more thoughts and um, Kathleen will always want an answer because it's Kathleen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's see what else. Anything else coming up for anybody else about this? Okay, so, and, uh, and again, interrupt me if, you, if something comes up. We have this on our calendar. We, can you believe it's the last Wednesday in July? Um, so we're gonna meet the 5th. We'll have a board meeting on the 10th. We also have a staff listening session on the 10th at five, specifically for staff to ask questions of the board. Um, and hopefully it revolves around COVID and not about other things. Um, we're gonna have staff here starting on the 4th for some training. So there's lots of different things going on. And you guys don't need to see all my notes. Um, do we feel, you know, the second is kids are here. Um, the whole staff is going to be here on the 26th. So I'm thinking that maybe we need to end on the 19th would be our last one. Or if something comes up, we can always add it back in. But I don't want to, I don't want to meet too much. Because then it just brings up, things that, you know, when we start school, it's going to be a little crazy. So does anybody feel that we need to, Keep meeting past, say, the 19th of August. Okay, so I will end that on um, the 19th of August. I probably just screwed that up, but Nope, still here. Anyway, um, 
All right, that's all I have, you guys. Um, unless anybody has anything else that's bubbling to the surface about school starting. Julie, it's Jeannie again. I, I got one little issue here, and I apologize. It's Julia who's under quarantine, not Julie. Okay. Uh, but beside from that, I, I have a real, it's the old nurse in me, I'm sorry. I have a real problem with watching school board members sitting there making decisions about this who aren't wearing masks at the meeting. You really question, I hate to say this, but I will. It's, it's just a small group here, don't repeat it. Their competency in making decisions about this if they themselves aren't wearing masks. And that there, I've said it. I'm gonna interject. This is a recorded meeting and uh, can be viewed by anybody that can access the website. That's fine, I don't care. Well, I do since my daughter's name was used. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was a little, I'd, I'd be upset and ashamed, so. Okay, so, yeah. Um, going back to the school board making the decisions, um, I, I, I actually agree with that a little bit. Um, we do have several families in our area that are choosing to not attend school because we will be requiring masks. And, um, but we also have families that, are, that would choose to not attend school if we weren't requiring masks. So from the get go, I've said that, you know, that we're not gonna make everybody happy um because this had fewer than 10 people and we were socially distanced i think that the board felt that they were okay not wearing masks um i believe that um as of monday which is august um, we're going to require everybody in the building to wear masks because we have um custodial workers they've been here um we kind of call each other family but we've been in close contact for, for a long time now, um, but we are going to be using the guidelines given to us by the board that all, unless you're in a room by yourself, which happens quite often if you're in an office where we have a lot of people cleaning in an office, uh, all, or not in an office, in a classroom all by themselves, um, that they are to be masked. And so the staff is aware of that. And at the next board meeting, if they don't bring masks, I will hand them one. The nice part about having these meetings online is that if a board member would like to, they can attend virtually and they don't have to be masked in their own home if they choose not to. So, um, and I will say that that Julie actually made that strong suggestion at the Monday meeting that if you know you were not going to mask, that you know the Zoom is available. So um, you know I um, I can only speak for myself. I'm not offended by what you said. I think I've been pretty diligent about masking. I have read so much COVID material that has been sent to us as board members that it's, you know, I, I feel strongly that I am pretty well informed. Um, but, um, you know, it is what it is. In fact, the other night I, I woke up in the night and I literally, I've never had a panic attack before. And I, I had a panic attack because it felt like I had COVID. And I think it's just been all this COVID talk, which we need to do. Yes. But I mean, we're reading it daily. And um, I would say, I think the board has been pretty diligent in reading what has been sent to us. At least I hope they have. We've been given a lot of good material. Yeah. The school board association has been doing a really nice job. I will say that the board did clarify and will probably continue this way throughout the um, school year. If you are outside 
socially distanced. The school board is not going to require masks to be worn. Uh, you can still wear your mask, obviously, if, if you're worried. But um, the thought is that that is a time when the children in the district can take off their mask and have a mask break. Um, additionally, um, lots of times they'll be running around. It'll either be recess or a, a break just to take their mask off, or they'll be in FIED. So it's, um, you know, if they're doing an activity where they're socially distancing, they should be able to be masked, unmasked at that point or take their facial covering off. Oh, they'll look forward to that. that. That's a, That was a good choice. And yeah. along with that, if they opt not to socially distance, they lose that privilege. Correct. That was also determined. So if your FIAD teacher tells you, this is where you stand, this is what you're going to do, now you can take your masks off, and if you are going to be a smart aleck and run up to the person next to you, you have just lost that privilege. Yep. That'll be my kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, you've got plenty of time to talk to him about it now. There you go. Yes, Marshall's been wearing one for two hours for driver's ed so that he's been breaking in on it because even though I'm not, I don't want to make them wear one, they're willing to wear one because they just want to come to school and see their teachers and, and be able to move on. So, right. so they're willing to put it on just because they want to be around everybody, So, which I was surprised by. So. So then, Julie, I'm assuming it's up to recess um, staff to enforce that if, if recess is a mask break? Yes. Okay. Ms. Shane has already figured out a schedule for um, each class or cohort to be able to have um, during their recess time. Uh, she's broken the uh, all the way from the softball field to by the new amphitheater. Um, there's a space in between there by the greenhouse um, so that it's all separated out so the kids can then, um, you know, the adults can keep the cohort separate and then they're still supposed to socially distance. But um, if, they, if they're if they all by themselves, if they have their, um, they're in their own cohort and they're in their own area, they should be able to take their masks off and, and run around like kids. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And again, part of that's going to be training. You know, um, Ms. Shane even brought up buying some rope, literally, and putting a knot in it every six feet to teach them, well, this is what six feet looks like from here, and this is what it looks like from here. Right. Um, you know, I was thinking about bringing in some yardsticks, just because if each kid, you know, just for the first, of course, I don't want them to play with the yardsticks, you know that, but it's the idea that, um, We'll have to teach them what six feet even looks like. Yeah. But I think those are great ideas because that falls under the education piece. You can't expect yes. to know it, and it's our job as teachers and parents to teach them and work with them ahead of time as much as we can to understand. So thank you. I really wish I could type fast, you guys. I cannot type fast. Okay, unless somebody has something else. I guess not, so I don't mind ending a meeting early. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we uh, repeat, we do have a board meeting on the 10th, if you want to come to that via Zoom. We also have a, a staff, for, for those of you who didn't see the email yet, we have a, a listening session with the board, and then um, we actually have, well, by then, lots of us will be in the building starting school already classes getting ready for our next next year already
course, I've, I've been doing that a while, but some of you haven't been doing it quite as long as I have. But um, thank you, guys. I always appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.